It's a clear, dark night, not long after sunset, and thousands of stars fill the sky. Suddenly, you spot a small, faint point of light moving slowly and silently in a straight line high overhead. It's moving too slowly to be a meteor, and you can tell that it's not an airplane because it doesn't have blinking red and green navigational lights. Even through binoculars, it just looks like a point, like a star, but it's definitely moving. Chances are you're looking at one of the roughly 1,000 operational satellites orbiting our planet. Launched into space in increasing numbers each year since 1957, satellites are an extension of our human senses into space, some looking down onto Earth below and others looking out into the universe. The ones you can see with the unaided eye are in low Earth orbit, a few hundred miles up, speeding around our planet at 17,000 miles per hour. That's fast enough so that even as the force of gravity pulls them back toward the ground, they're falling parallel to Earth's curved surface. To paraphrase Sir Isaac Newton, they're falling down, but they're also moving sideways so fast that they keep missing the planet. Other satellites may be too high and far away to be seen, even though they're still circling Earth. In fact, the farther away they are, the more slowly they orbit. Some of the most useful satellites follow geostationary orbits, about 23,000 miles out. At that distance, they're orbiting Earth at the same rate at which the planet rotates. Because of this, each satellite keeps pace with the same point on the ground and appears to be standing still in the sky. Examples of satellites in geostationary orbits are those used in weather monitoring and in communication. The light you see coming from a satellite is the same light you see when you look at planets or at the moon. These objects are visible only because they reflect the light of the sun. We see them only because they're high enough to catch the sun's light, even when it's dark on the ground. The biggest and brightest satellite in operation is the International Space Station, which will remain in service until the 2020s. About the size of a football field, it provides plenty of surface area to reflect the sun's light, and that makes it an extremely bright object in the sky, rivaling even the planet Venus. You can consult several websites, including NASA's, to find out when the space station can be spotted passing over your location. Sometimes a satellite may flare or brighten suddenly. This is usually because it has large mirror-like panels that reflect sunlight to the ground. The best known of these are called iridium flares, after the iridium satellites that produce them. But many other large satellites can flare as well. To an observer in the path of the reflection, the flare may look like a faint, slowly moving star that suddenly brightens over several seconds, then fades out just as abruptly. The entire incident is so brief it's easy to miss. But the fun thing is that these particular satellites are so precisely oriented that their flares can be predicted. The right web page or appropriate app can tell you exactly when and where to look for flares. Satellites don't live forever, and sooner or later they may re-enter the atmosphere and burn up like meteors. As some satellites fall out of orbit, new ones are launched to replace them keeping the overall population of functional satellites fairly constant. One day, however, we'll need to figure out a better way to deal with obsolete satellites so they don't clutter up the sky and pose a hazard to future human spaceflight. On almost any clear, dark night away from city lights, it's possible to see about a half dozen satellites coasting silently overhead. High-flying assets critical for everything from communications and entertainment to navigation and weather forecasting. We may take them for granted. We can also enjoy them from a different perspective when we see them hurtling across a dark night sky.